All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Rakakodash, and double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. And I'll say peace and blessings be unto the whole full elect. You know, so just want to hit a lesson real quick. You know, and I'm pretty much dealing with, um, you know what I'm saying, the wounds of affliction. Um, that's pretty much what I may uh, title the lesson, the wounds of affliction. You know, because, you know, we understand that. When you look at Jake, all right, in the condition that our people are in, or us included, you know, the Lord ultimately did that for a punishment, you know, because of our disobedience. Um, pretty much what sparked this lesson is, you know, watching that video, uh, the brother GMS Watchman, um, Yashalam did. The, the 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 video he posted, Salaki, on his channel, pretty much, you know, you see those Israelites in, um, in Nigeria, you know, the conditions that they're living in. That's uh, all due to the curses that Yahweh by Shem Yahusha put on them, put on us, Salakia, because we we as a people are under those curses, you know. And as you can see, all right, these are the wounds, all right, uh, uh, of the curses that are put on us, man, you know. And when you read the curses, you see the average person out there don't know, you know, why we in this condition. They don't know what we're going through, you know. What what we're going through is biblical, you know. This is Deuteronomy twenty uh, twenty eight and fifteen. You know, going back to the basics, man, because, you know, uh, you know, like Elder Apostle Ramla, I always say, you know, the, the building block scriptures, you know, are important. All right. You need a foundation, you know. <clears throat> but this is Deuteronomy 28 and 15. And it says, but it shall come to pass if thou would not hearken unto the voice of the Lord, thy power to, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee. And overtake you, overtake thee, you know. And seeing the condition that we're in, that we're in right now, all right. The only uh, the only what's the what's the better word for it? The only um, answer, so to speak, that uh to to what we're in right now is the curses, as you can see to this day, all right. And, and another thing to uh to consider is that, you know, it's a beautiful thing that we see, you know, that that we see that we're we're under the curses, you know. That tells us that we're, we are the people of the Heavenly Father. You know, yeah, we're going through hell. We're catching hell on these curses. But, uh, you know, we know that we're, we're the chosen of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. And we, you know, we know why we're in this condition because we went off, you know. As a matter of fact, in the book of Habakkuk. Let me get that real quick. In the book of Habakkuk, the uh, second chapter. No, it was the third chapter, still I could. No, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Micah, I'm sorry, I'm thinking of Habakkuk, Micah chapter 7, in verse uh, 9, it says, I will bear the indignation of the Lord, because I have sinned against him, until he plead my cause, and execute judgment for me, he will bring me forth to the light, and I shall behold his righteousness, right, so all of us being in this condition, that's the indignation of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, because of our disobedience, because of what's going off. You know, as I stated in the beginning of the lesson, you know, um, the average person out there won't won't understand this. But us being in this light, we understand why we're in this horrible condition. All right, from the so-called blacks down to the so-called Mexicans. You know, because when you look at the land of Mexico, Puerto Rico, all right, those are Israelites too. They killing each other. All right, they going through the same thing the so-called blacks are going through, man. You know, but us as a people, we're under the curses. All right. But once again, these are the wounds of the affliction, you know, the curses that the Heavenly Father put on us. All right. <clears throat> this is. Let me get this real quick. Nahum chapter uh, one and verse 12. Thus saith the Lord, though they be quiet and likewise many, yet thus shall they be cut down when he shall pass through. Though I have afflicted thee, I will afflict thee no more. For now will I break his yoke from off thee, and will burst thy bonds in sunder. All right, the yoke of the oppressor, man, which is who? The so-called white man, all right, along with these different nations, you know, that are oppressing our people. But once again, you know, it's in the curses that we'd be the bottom, all right? We'd be on the bottom. As a matter of fact, Esau being on top of us is a curse. Let me get that real quick in Deuteronomy 28 also, just to prove that point. <clears throat> So, like, bear with me. I'm going to get it real quick. 
which is Deuteronomy 28 and verse. This is it, Deuteronomy 28 and 43. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. You see? So. That's what we see going on right now. Our people are on the on low condition in this world. All right. All right. And the so-called white man is on the top. All right. But this is all in the curse. So the so-called white man being on top of us is altogether a curse. You know. But at the end of the day, this is not forever, man. All right. Our salvation is nearer than when we believe, man. Because we got signs happening. You know, chariots in the air. Our prophecies are coming to pass. Matter of fact, in the book of Second Ezra, the ninth chapter, it tells you what? To measure out the times diligently. All right, by measuring the times, you're watching the prophecies and watching for the things that uh, uh, that there are foretold to happen. Okay. Um, this is Hebrews 12 and 6. And I wanted to bring this uh, scripture out in the lesson because, you know, yo, we catching hell. We going through it. All right. But when you really consider it, the hell that we catching was the most high chastising us. All right. As sons. All right. You know, I remember my brother made a good point. You know, I, I forget who it was, but they said that Yahweh Shai, you know, went through what he went through, all right, because the Most High loved him, all right. The first spirits created, you no know, promised, you no know, promised everlasting kingdom, all right. The Lord pretty much gave him everything, man. So, you know, to balance it out, Yahweh Shai had to go through, you know, go through what he went through, that sacrifice, you know, to 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 inherit all those things. And really, it was, you know, foretold from the foundation of the world. But that's how the Lord. That's how the Lord had to play out. But us as sons of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, you know, we must also go through chastisement. All right, we must also go through chastisement and uh, you know, get afflicted, be afflicted. All right, because that that's uh, Salaki, that straightens us out. You know, that makes us better. Um, Hebrews twelve and six, for whom the Lord loveth, He chast chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom He receiveth. If ye endure chastening, the most I uh, dealeth, with, uh, dealeth with you, as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? All right? And that's why, you know, what I said earlier, I said it's a good thing that, you know, we're constantly chastening. Yeah, it hurts. Yeah, you know, sometimes you go through things and it feels like it's not fair. But at the end of the day, like the book of uh, Micah say in the seventh chapter, you know, I will bear the indignation of the Lord. All right? Because we sinned against him. So at the end of the day, we know that we deserve it. It could be worse, you know, what we're going through could be worse, but you know what I'm saying? It's just better to uh, endure what we got to go through, man. Take on the chastisement because it's only going to make us better, you know, but that, so, so the way that I see it, you know, the, uh, you know, the affliction that we go through or the wounds that we have uh, upon us as a nation, it's not forever, man. All right. <clears throat> I just want to get these scriptures out. Psalms 18 and verse three. I will call upon the Lord. And this is what the Lord wants. He wants us to call upon him as we're being afflicted, man. You know, depend so we gotta depend on Yahweh by Shimia Shai, you know, to get to get uh you know to get up out of these conditions that 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 we're going through, man. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from mine enemies. The sorrows, remember the enemies are on top right now. Alright? And unless we unless uh you know Unless you how about Shimia or Shai do something about it, we can't we can't get out of this condition. The Lord is our only way out. So the sorrows of death come past me, and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. This is talking about the so-called white people, man. The Edomites. Especially when they come in like a flood. Read Isaiah 59 chapter where it says, When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Lord will lift up a standard against them. And that's the only way we're gonna beat the so-called white man. Alright? It's through Yahweh by Shim Yahweh Shai. No bow, no bow, no sword, no nothing, man. We need the power of the Lord to beat this man. The sorrows of hell can pass me about. The snares of death prevented me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my power. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him, even unto his ears. Right, and the Lord is going to hear the cries of his elect, man. All right? If you're of the elect, the Lord is hearing you cry before him. All right, whatever you're going through, the Lord is hearing that in, in your spirit, man. All right? The Lord is hearing you cry. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations also of the hills moved and were shaken because he was wroth. All right. And we're going to see this happen very shortly. All right. When this man come in like a flood, 
you know, the Lord's going to make big moves in this earth, man. All right, for his elect. And ultimately, when those thermonuclear missiles hit America, man, foundations is going to move, all right? The earth is going to shake, man, all right? Yahweh Shem Shah is going to, you know, recompense these heathen, recompense two-thirds for his elect. So at the end of the day, for the elect chastisement, you know, ain't so bad when you consider it. Because at the end of the day, the affliction is only making you stronger. Just like the scriptures say, for gold is tried in the fire, an acceptable man in the furnace of adversity. Man, let me get that real quick. Um, Sirach 2 and 9, it says, no, not 2 and 9, Salaki. 2 and 5, it says, for gold is tried in the fire, an acceptable man in the furnace of adversity. All right. Constantly afflicted, man. All right. Adversity. This world is totally adverse. All right, to the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. And if the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai is upon you, then by default, this world is adverse to you, man. You know, so constant affliction is always coming upon those that fear the Lord. But at the end of the day, <laughs> you know, this affliction is only making you stronger, man. You know, so Lord willing, this is edifying. I'm going to end it off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashim, Yahushai Bashim, Rakakodash. And double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the hopeful elect. You know, hey, the wound of the wound of uh, affliction will be healed, man. Till next time, I see y'all the one.